Hi guys! So I'm here to do a currently reading video. I'm going to talk to you about the three books I'm currently in the process of actively reading and thankfully because I have recently read quite a few duds or just underwhelming books I am actually really quite enjoying all three of these books. So I am very pleased about that. But let's just get into it, shall we? So the first book is the one I started the longest time ago, and that is Demosthenes of Athens and the Fall of Classical Greece by Ian Worthington. This is an ancient history book. This isn't directly related to reading for my PhD thesis. It's it's not on my specific topic. However, it is about the period of time that I am studying, which is fourth century uh, Greece, specifically in Athens. And Demosthenes is one of the major sources for my thesis. So Demosthenes is one of my favorite ancient authors to read. He was a classical Athenian orator. He wrote court speeches for both um, court cases and sort of political speeches. And like I mentioned, he was around during the fourth century. So this book is in part a biography of Demosthenes, which is what I really wanted. Um, but it also is in part a story of, well, the fall of classical Greece. It's, it's the story of the fourth century and particularly the second half of the fourth century BC um, in which Macedon, under the rule of Philip II starts to expand its territory and its empire. He is the father of Alexander the Great and takes over Greece. And one of the things Demosthenes is known for is um, giving a lot of speeches in opposition to Macedon and, and, and Philip and why Athens needed to sort of um, play a more active role in preventing this expansion, which obviously um, they didn't do and by the time they did it was too late. <laughs> and on, on the book, it's a good book. I learned some stuff so far about Demosthenes life that I didn't know because I've had sort of his early years growing up um, and about him as a child. I'm about 70 pages in, it's about just over 300 pages and I've also had a bit of a nice refresher on um, the relationships of the different Greek city-states and uh, Macedon and um, their alliances and during different wars like the Peloponnesian War. It does jump around a lot, I will say though. It goes from being a chapter on Demosthenes' life to being a chapter on, you know, 50 years earlier and um, what, what's going on in Macedon and Athens and what will lead to the situation that then Demosthenes comments on. So it does jump back and forward a bit, which I find a little bit jarring. I think it's difficult because I'm not sure how I would necessarily structure this book myself. It's not that I've got a better idea for structuring it, but it is a little bit like you want to know about Demosthenes and then you're learning about something else. But it's all interesting and it's very, very readable. I would definitely say, even if you're not, you know, that well versed in ancient history, it's one you could pick up and read. And it's nice that it's framed around this one person's life, but it is definitely more than just an biography of Demosthenes. But the next book I'm reading is also non-fiction. It is non-fiction November after all. The audiobook I'm listening to is not non-fiction, so there will be some fiction next. But the next physical book I'm reading, which I just realised I bent, is this copy of What is Economics by Rosa Luxemburg. So I think this book is not in print anymore. It's uh, the first English translation of this work that was written by Rosa Luxemburg and it came out in the 1960s and it's one part of a larger work that Rosa Luxemburg wrote on economics that doesn't survive in full. We don't have the complete work, or at least we didn't in the 1960s. Um, I read it from the introduction of this. And yeah, I don't think this edition is available anymore, but I do imagine you could pick it up in a, you know, bound volume of Rosa Luxemburg's work. So I will find something and link it down below in which you can read this because I love this. This is so good. I was familiar vaguely with Ro who Ros Rosa Luxemburg was. She was a political activist in the late 18 and early 1900s. She was eventually killed by a far-right group in Germany uh, just after the First World War. And she wrote quite a few works, um, lots of little short pamphlet volumes like this. This comes in around 100 pages and I'm about 30 pages in. 
It is so fantastic though. I did not know how much I was going to love her writing. The best thing I can describe her as is Queen of Sass. She is so sassy, sarcastic, witty, and just completely tears down pompous, incomprehensible academia that is in no way clear or really gives answers or is accessible or anything like that. And she really just like, you know, throws so much academic shade and her writing is brilliant. It is full of really witty remarks, but at the same time it is an exploration of economics. She's addressing what is economics in the sense of what is that scientific discipline? Um, what does economics study as opposed to necessarily what is an economy? Although it touches on different things and I don't know um, where this book will necessarily go by the end, but so far I have just loved it. She's had me laughing, grinning, nodding, and also learning. And what more could I possibly want? I'm definitely going to be reading more Rosa Luxemburg, I imagine, after I finish this book because I just think it's brilliant. I love her so much. And I just really love the philosophy of her writing because as somebody who is in an academic environment, who wants to be an academic, who um, reads and writes in the world of academia as a PhD student, that it's something that I um, have always felt very passionately about, the accessibility of information. And so I have great respect for Rosa Luxemburg. But lastly, like I mentioned, I'm listening to a fiction audiobook and that is The Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett. Discworld number 41. This was the last ever Discworld book published prior to Terry Pratchett's passing away. And like I mentioned, it's both the final Discworld novel, but it's also the final in a series which Terry Pratchett set on his Discworld novel, which are the Tiffany Aching books. Although I think um, there are a wide array of books that you can use to introduce yourself to Discworld, you certainly don't need to start with the first published book. I would not say this is a place to start if you've not already read Terry Pratchett. I have a video on suggestions of places to start if you're interested, but it is a very nice sort of ending, I must say. So the Tiffany Aching series begins with the Wee Free Men. It follows Tiffany Aching, who is a young girl that becomes a witch. And um, the Wee Free Men are these um, small picty characters um, who are loud and Scottish and I love them and um, become and, and she becomes friends with. So it's following her, it's also following some new, it's following her, lots of old favourites from um, the Discworld and some new characters. And it's got a very final ending tone to it. Um, obviously Terry Pratchett knew he was ill for a long time and, and this book really just has a sense of ending to it but in quite a beautiful way and I'm really enjoying listening to it on audiobook. I think it works really well because I do think some of the later Discworld books were not the best of the Discworld stories, but I am really enjoying listening to this one on audiobook. I think it's a really um, quite emotional story if you're a fan of, of the Discworld. And it's funny and the characters you love are there and I'm just all around very much enjoying it. But like I mentioned, if you're interested in the Tiffany Aching series, I would very much suggest trying the Wee Free Men or checking out one of Terry Pratchett's other Discworld novels, which um, again, I'll link my video introducing the series to you somewhere up here and down there. But that's everything I'm currently reading. I would love to hear your thoughts on anything I mentioned in this video. I'd also love to know what you're currently reading. Are you taking part in non-fiction November? Are you reading anything particularly good at the moment? And in general, how's your reading going? Let's chat in the comments down below. Until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!